ladies and gentlemen and we are right back with another video back to back we here so if you are new to the channel or if you've been watching my channel and you just have not subscribed yet become one of the players on the palace subscribe to my channel man become one of the players and enjoy great content man that we're going to keep dishing out all season long all year long you know how it is you know what it do we're going to get into the lions and i find it very interesting as to how people are treating my lions i love it man you know i love as much crap people are talking about my team it's good i'm a bask in it i'm a soak in it you know i'm gonna remember everything y'all saying about my lions when we come back and whoop on folks i'm gonna remember it lions are gonna do better than we did last season that's all i care about i mean I don't even care about that, to be honest. Record-wise, even if we don't do better than last season, I don't really care. What I care about is us building the culture and building that identity in Detroit, like I have said before. We are, but we're guaranteed gonna do better. We are guaranteed gonna do better. My thing is, don't be surprised when DeAndre Swift balls out. Don't be surprised when Amon Ross St. Brown is one of the best rookie receivers in the league. Don't be surprised when I win fantasy this year. <laughs> but no, honestly, hey, Dan, Dan the man, Motor City, Dan Campbell, MCDC. Listen, stop drinking all that coffee. It's not good for you. <laughs> it is 80 ounces of coffee a day in the morning. 240 ounces. I don't know what a venti is. I don't know what none of that is. I don't know what two shots of espresso in each uh, 40 ounce is, but that does not sound healthy. I am a medical major. That does not sound good. <laughs> Please stop. God. Um. But where do I begin? Amon Ross St. Brown was the one that got into an altercation. And the other person that got into the altercation was my boy, Ife. Melifan Wu. I think I said his name right. Melifan Wu. If I did not, I'm very sorry, Ife. But, oh, I love it. The two rookies, the wide receiver in the corner got in a fight. Oh, I love it. Bro. This is build. This is building camaraderie. I don't know what happened with the Giants. Don't ask me. <laughs> I don't know what happened with the Giants. If you want me to make a video on that, leave a comment and I'll make a video on the Giant and I'll go do some research and then I'll come back to y'all with the news from the Giants. But oh, we talking about the Pistons right now. I mean, we talking about the Lions right now. And best believe, I love it. And so did Dan. He said fighting is good for the culture. It's good. It's good for the team. It's good and um, you know, building momentum. However, it's not good if you have too much of it. And I agree, we don't need people fighting every day. If you have it every now and then, it means people care. It means they're, it means they want to do this. They wanna be here. They're, inve they're emotionally invested. I love it. I'm loving everything that's going on. The press conferences, oh my God, Deuce. This man, hey, this man, Deuce is gonna be, a, is gonna be head coach in this league one day. Deuce is that man, he's, a, he's that man. He's that man. I loved his press conference. And this man, Jonah Jackson, bro, he he, he, about, he about to be something special. Jonah's nice. I really like Jonah Jackson. This dude is different. I believe that our Lions, we were ranked the 10th best offensive line, I believe, in the league. I honestly believe we'll end up in top five offensive line in the league by the end of the season. DeAndre Swift, at first, it's going to be this running back by committee thing with, oh, well, this one-two punch with him and Williams, but then he's going to, he's going to, he's going to, uh, he's going to cross that boundary. He's going to solidify himself as the number one running back. And I can't remember who said it, but shout out to you. Somebody was um, reporting on him, calling him an Alvin Kamara type of run. I was like, ooh, ooh. That's high praise. And it was somebody um, notable that said he has Al Alvin Kamara um, potential. It was somebody notable that said that. So I was like, I'm, I'm, I love this. Oh, that's dope. But having a guy like Jonah Jackson and watching his interview, having a, having a young guy like him talk like he's a veteran, portray himself as a veteran this early on, it's only year two. I, I love what I'm I love what I'm seeing. I really do. This team is really developing into something special. Honest to God, I, I I'm I'm very happy with these with this Lions team. From every press conference I've been watching from Dan, 
it, it's so important, especially when it was one press conference. I've been watching a lot of them, so it gets mixed up in my head. But it was one where he was talking about when you're doing one tens, 16 one tens, but one tens. I hate, I hated one tens. Oh my God, I hated one tens. But you know, so you're doing what? So one tens is basically from from end zone to end zone, 16 of those. <laughs> 16 of those, bro. That yeah, that was a lot. But he was speaking on one tens and he was saying how it is important it is important to actually pay attention and see the players who are consistent through the one tens. And then the players that have that initial burst of speed, they're pad, they're blowing by everybody in the first couple of ones. Mid ones, they're kind of eh. The last, the last couple ones, they busted back out. You know, they're right back out in front. And it was like, yeah, you were doing all this in uh, the fourth quarter, but where were you in the first, second, and third quarter? He was talking about he, he'd take jabs at players who would do that. I respect that. Because if you're constantly just giving your all in each and every 110, you know, it, ma- it makes sense. You're, consistent, you're consistently in one spot in the pack versus somebody that's kind of conserving their energy like oh let me save my energy let me let me do this let me do all right now bam we're gonna go all out right here no you should have been going out the whole all out the whole time that's why it's so important having this coaching staff majority former players it's so important because they really they understand the players they are they're listening to them they're treating them like a family and then whenever you would see they have little uh, questions that they have the players ask, you know, while coming to and from practice. It, it's dope to get into their mindset to see what, like, how these guys think individually. Who is this person? He's uh, Dan Campbell is talking about having staff, you know, people on staff who are really in tune with like psychology and whatnot, like. Worried about who? Oh, wh- why are you feeling this way? Who came into your life that is ruining things for you? Who is bothering you at home? What's going on? Um, how are you feeling in your relationships? Um, um, cheering on David, uh, David, uh, David. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. David Blau's uh, wife in the Olympics. These types of things are very important, and it's showing that they're really building a family over there with the Detroit Lions. Dan really understands, and he's taking the time and energy out, and especially seeing the majority of, if not, yeah, the majority of his coaching staff are all black coaches. It it, scre- it screams that Dan understands, man. He really understands the culture of a general football locker room. He understands that do you know he doesn't need to be the one on on stand talking the whole time in front of the team. Let Deuce talk, you know, let somebody else other than Dan get across the message that the coaching staff is trying to give to the team. Like it's very motivational and I really love that for this team. That's why I'm just I'm excited to watch each and every game because I know they're doing the best they can in practice. They're doing the best they can in games. They're doing the best they can in film study. And even watching Dan Campbell do up downs with the team. I'm just like, bro, like you you can't get a coaching staff better than this. And one of my group chats was talking about, yeah, yeah, it's all fun and games with those culture coaches until they're one, five and eleven. It's important to have that culture it's important to have these things you know yeah we may have a bad record this season we may have it we may not i don't care as long as the players are building this foundation for the organization to go along in the future that's what i care about and he was saying to, uh, he was saying in one of the interviews, yeah, today is going to be the last day that we're all like this. So remember this. These Remember these days in the off season because this is the last time we're all going to be together like this. So it is important to really trust in your teammates. It's important to build the relationship with your teammates because things are always constantly changing. We're constantly moving. We're constantly adapting. And you really have to take in a, into account how precious these times are. And, bro, I just can't say how much that Dan understands. He really does, bro. It's, 
like I said, I get emotional when I'm when I'm watching what's going on with the Detroit teams because we're really building something special with the Lions and the Pistons. It's this is dope, bro. This is so great to see. But we're we're gonna end it right there. Actually, we face we face the Bills next Friday. I'm excited. I know y'all are. So with that being said, I'm gonna end it right there. And the next time I'm gonna bring y'all a Lions video, it's going to be discussing on the preseason game. If you're new to the channel, make sure y'all like, share, subscribe. I'm gonna catch y'all later. Peace out.